First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Now, I'm amazed. The reason for my amazement is that the person that gave the most detailed presentation on the account of the communion table, the account of the Last Supper was not there. Apostle Paul gave us the most detailed presentation of the account of the Last Supper and it was not physically present. So, how, how did he come about these details? He told us, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He got it by revelation. Sometimes, are you there? It's just like the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah prophesied 730 years before Jesus was hung on the tree in Golgotha. But the details that he captured in his prophecy is more detailed by, than eyewitnesses. So once and again, we need to go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 53 in order for us to excavate, to dredge some details in that presentation and prophetic significances of several things that took place. So his account was richer than the account of eyewitnesses. Same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I would like us to understand the purpose of this. Now stay with me. The Bible says that that night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And what did he say? He said, take it. What did he take? He took what? Bread. bread. Now, this is what he said. He said, take it. This is my body. I will need to explain that. Because some theologians say that when we bless this communion table, the bread and the cup is transformed into the actual body and blood of Jesus. That is theologically wrong. Some other theologians say the bread and, 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 and wine is a mere symbol of the body and the blood of Jesus. That is also theologically wrong. That is not what is in the Bible. I know you people, most all of you are in one camp or the other. But you know what? <laughs> yes, yes. You, you, just, you people are in one camp or the other. But today we want to find out what is in the Bible. Can we do some permutations quickly? That's why I asked you, what did he take? So there was no answer. So because of that, I, even this my presentation, I, I will remove that aspect of it. I said, what did he take? He took what? Yeah. Now, so we need to analyze something. What Jesus took and what Jesus said. So what did he take? He took bread. What did he say? He said, take it. This is my so stay with me. At least you know that there's a difference between what he took and what he said. When you read the Bible, don't rush. Think about it. Whenever you give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to exercise your mind on these things, he will begin to think through your thoughts. He will stretch your thoughts beyond your thinking capacity and bring your thoughts into his own thoughts. When you come into his thoughts, you will realize that you did not have the capacity to think like that. It's just that he gave you the privilege to come into his thoughts. The Bible says, God sent an invitation. He said, come, let us reason together. So God is hoping that you will give him the opportunity by reasoning in his word, and then he will conduct a summon that will make you enter into the economy of his thoughts. So Jesus took bread, but he said, eat, this is my body. So that's number one. Which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So the first purpose of fellowshipping with God at the communion table is a remembrance occasion. That's the first purpose. And as we proceed, we might need to explain why we need to perpetually remember Jesus. Are you there? And after the same manner also, he took the cup. What did he take? When he had supped, saying, this is the cup the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Secondly, 
in doing this, we show his death. Hmm? In doing this, we are remembering him. That's one. In doing this, we show what? His death. That means we need to find out the significance of his death. Why did he die? And what is the implication of his dying? What exactly did his death occasion? Okay, so you got that. Now. Then he gives us a little warning in verse 27. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. That means if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, you are not qualified to eat from this table. However, you'll be given an opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can become worthy to partake of this table. Is that clear? And those of you that are listening to me online, please get bread and get wine and follow the proceedings. Follow the proceedings and uh, do as you are instructed in Jesus' mighty name. First thing we need to qualify is the two extremes of the theology of the communion table. The Bible says what Jesus took was bread and what we have on the table here is bread. But the Bible says what Jesus said was that take it for this is my body. Meaning that it doesn't change from being bread but that the communion table affords us the opportunity to commune to, it's, it's a unique platform of fellowship with God that gives us the opportunity to be able to spiritually encounter the actual body and blood of Jesus. It is only the communion table that is the platform that we can achieve that. So even though what you're interacting with is physical bread, physical wine, the significance of what you are doing brings you into fellowship with the actual bread, actual body, actual blood. So if you come to the table reverently, as you partake of the table, you transit beyond the table and you have an actual encounter with the original substance. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15 and 16. Do you have 15 on your board? And I speak as to the wise, judge ye what I say, all right? He said, a cup of blessing, which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? There are two things here. The, the cup of blessing, which we bless, because I'm going to bless it, because Jesus blessed it. He hmm? said, that cup of blessing, what exactly are you interacting with? Is it physical bread or the communion of the blood of Jesus? You get that? He still called it the cup of blessing. It means you are dealing with some physical things here. But the objective of this fellowship is that you will commune with the blood of Christ. The objective of this fellowship is that you will commune with the body of Christ. And a platform that affords us this opportunity is called what? The communion table. Together? Now, before we begin this communion, you need to understand the significance of the blood of Jesus. And you know that the blood of Jesus will not have been spilled if Jesus did not die. So, how many of you know that the reason for your salvation, the actual reason for your salvation is the blood? The blood is the payment for our rebellion against God. The blood is also the basis of our forgiveness. So when you hear the Bible says, in him we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. Oh my. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. Are you there? So now, from this scripture, Verse number 14, he begins to tell us about his son, his dear son. This verse 12 was saying we should give thanks unto the Father. He's the one that has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's the one that was responsible by an act of his will to translate us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Then, in verse 14, he begins to talk about his dear son. Okay, give me 14 quickly. He said, in whom we have redemption. How? Even the forgiveness of sin, these two things are 
realities, new realities that are obtainable on the account of his blood. So if you are particular, are you, there, are you with me? If it is true that in him we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, then I need to take you to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 2, then I will show you one of the blessings of apostolic fellowship. Apart from when you confess your sin hmm? and you get forgiven, you get washed from every error, every form of unrighteousness that you have, you have done. There is also another regime of cleansing that takes place when we gather like this. It is not because you requested to be cleansed. Huh? It's because you came into alignment with the reality of the cleansing power that is in the blood of Jesus. And that takes effect organically. Many wonders take place on days like this. Wonders that we cannot, we are not even aware of. Maybe when we pass into the realm where God is willing to unveil our understanding, to see the significance of everything that God has instructed us to do. The Bible says concerning the communion table, it says, that cup that we bless, what is it? Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? It is a cup. We are blessing it. And we are hoping that you'll be able to commune with the blood of Christ. It is bread. We have broken it and we have blessed it. But we are hoping that you'll be able to commune with the actual body of Christ in spiritual form. And if his own body was broken, when you commune with his body, yours should not be broken. In fact, in fact, in the early church, the antidote that the church had against sickness was a communion table. So they, were, they administered the communion regularly and one of the guarantees that is associated with that is that, do you remember when James asked, is there any sick among you? What's the meaning of that question? It means it wasn't customary for people to be sick, so they need to ask, anyone sick today? But today we need to ask people, is there anybody aware? Because every, because every, everyone is afflicted. We are expecting tonight that you will fellowship with that blood that was broken. And just in case your body is broken, if you make contact with that reality, there is a guarantee that your body will be fixed. If you fellowship with a cup and you also commune with the blood, it will wipe away every wrinkle and every spot and you receive renewed rejuvenation to walk with the Lord. The Bible says that he gave Abraham bread and wine. That was where it was instituted. And it will interest you to know that among the Jews, when a covenant is, is to be established, there is communion, there is eating and drinking as part of the protocol to establish covenant. In fact, the way covenants were established in Bible days was that um, you will come, they will cut you, the other person, they will cut the person, pour your blood in a cup, mix it with wine, and both of you will drink. And then you begin to declare the terms of the covenant. And the spot where people make those vows, they will plant a tree there as a covenant tree. As long as that tree is alive, everything that you people have said is binding. But in the New Testament arrangement, your blood has no value because it is the blood of a rebel. Somebody that the only thing he knows how to do is to betray and to rebel. So there was no need for us to add our own. Only the blood. <laughs> it's not me that said it, it's the Bible. The first kingdom message that was preached in the Bible is repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your ways. Because in the eyes of heaven, we are only good at rebellion. So there was no need to involve, include your own blood because it won't make any meaning. So we use his blood as the basis of the new and the everlasting covenant. Uh, should I ask you something? You, is it true? While you were moving around, going to work, moving, driving around, do you, is it true that you carry the consciousness of Jesus? Please answer me. Answer me. You went to the bank eh? and that lady that disrespected you that you almost slapped, were you doing that slapping? That investment you wanted to invest in Islam. Were you doing it really with 
the knowledge of Jesus retained on your heart. When covenants are established, it is needful for covenants to be renewed again and again. Because when time passes, many new developments come. Many new things come into society. Many new possibilities come into society. So it is needful for you to seasonally renew your oath, your covenant. That uh, even though this has changed, that has changed, this new development has come, this new system has been established, but we are still loyal to the terms of the covenant. So it's needful to renew covenants again and again. And our covenant that we have with Jesus is a blood covenant. Hallelujah. And we need to renew it. As we renew it, we remember. We remember who we used to be before Jesus came and offered us lineage. We remember that there was nothing in us that was worthy of that sacrifice. We remember that his motivation was agape love. It was not because there was anything good in us, but he was driven by an unconditional love to sacrifice himself so that we will have a place in the kingdom of God. It is good for us to renew this covenant and understand that in view of the sacrifice he put on the table, in order for us to show that we have come into the full understanding of that which he did, it is needful for us to begin to live for him. So one of the things that is expected that should result from our fellowshipping at the communion table is that you leave the table with a conviction to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. It's a basis through which we can renew our covenant with God. Secondly, Jesus said, as often as you do it, you do so, you, you do show forth my death. We show forth his death till he comes. That means, if, if you read several religious books, all right, because I wanted to know the argument of other religions, you know, I wanted to know the argument. What, what are they preaching? What is the basis? Why are they disturbing people? So the same way I studied the Bible, I wanted to I study it. And I, I, I can tell you this for free, that there is no religious book that offers forgiveness. None. Except the Bible. And that forgiveness is because of the blood of Jesus. It means that your sins will still remain. And the books did not lie. They didn't lie that, you know, God will forgive you. No, none of them. None of them lied. There is no hope for forgiveness in any religion apart from Jesus. Are you there? No, so on this matter, I studied wide because it is my field. If I want to present my faith, I do it with all confidence because I know what other faiths teach. So that you will not come to a point of confusion and think that there's something else outside of Jesus somewhere and you want to look for it. There's a temple in, 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 in India that you need to go and sit down like and I want to relieve you of that, of, the, of that trip. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Are you with me? Second thing, Apostle Paul says, when we do this, we show forth his death. Now, this is what I discovered in those religious books. Most of the books don't believe that Jesus came. Some others believe that he died. He came, but he did not die came, he was raptured into heaven. That's why he's going to come again, because he didn't die. Hmm? But the Bible says that when we come to fellowship at the communion table, we do not only believe that he came, because the doctrine of the Antichrist is that Jesus has not come. Are you still with me? That's what the Bible says. So when you go to Jerusalem now, they believe that the Messiah has not come. It, it, is, it is the doctrine of the Antichrist. Because they do not believe that the Messiah has, is yet to come, because they do not believe that the Messiah has come, when the Antichrist comes, they will embrace it as the Messiah. So that's the deception that the spirit of the Antichrist has put in the earth. So some believe he came, he didn't die. Some others believe he has not yet come. But when we fellowship at the communion table, we, not, we do not only believe that he came, we also believe that he died. And this is an act of showing forth his death till he comes. Okay. You must understand. You must understand that in the balance of divine justice, the punishment that was supposed to result 
on the account of the rebellion of man is death. For in the day that you eat of this food, in dying ye shall surely die. It means that it's a sentence of death that passed on all men. The reason why God had to become man, you must have heard my summary of the gospel. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that sons of men might become sons of God. That's, that's the summary of the gospel. But the reason why it was not a man God chose to die on our behalf is because every man was already guilty of that crime in view of the fact that Adam did not have children before that rebellion. So the entire race of the humankind had become guilty of that sin and a mutation had taken place. We are only good at rebellion thereafter. That's one. Number two, even if they found a man that was not guilty of the original sin and they killed him, sacrifice him, he will only have the capacity to save one man. So the Bible speaks about the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. That's the only blood that has the capacity to save all men. Because, are you there? Because of the God element, the God factor that was associated with him. His blood now had capacity to become that, that offering, that sacrifice that can redeem all men. I did a very in-depth study in the judicial implication of the blood of Jesus. And I've not taught you that. Very detailed. And that's why it had to take the blood of God. God had to become man to have blood. And that blood was the only blood that had capacity to save all men. So there were no two sets of people that would have brought us redemption. It's only one. And that's Jesus. And that's why at the end of the day, if after all that Jesus has done, somebody is found on the other side of eternity <laughs> without acknowledging him, without becoming his descendant by faith, there is no other creed by which such a soul can be brought into light. Do you know that when Jesus took on flesh and walked on this world as one of us, you know he was 100% God, 100% man. I know you know that. But do you realize that what Jesus did, what Jesus knew was what the Holy Ghost revealed to him? Because he took on the, 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 the shape of man, he was limited. In fact, in order for him to be man, he had to suspend his omni powers. He was no longer everywhere at the same time. He was localized at space and time. He did not have all power. He only exercised as much power as the Holy Spirit made available to him. Are you there? He did not know everything because I can show you in scriptures points where Jesus actually there were some manifestations that revealed that he didn't have that knowledge at that time. Do you still remember the woman that was caught in the heart of our adultery? And they came to him with a very deep theological question. According to the law of Moses, this woman should be stoned to death. But what say he? And the Bible says he was doing what? Writing on the ground. He was waiting for the Holy Ghost. So, that insight had not yet come. So I, I've read between the lines to see, to see how Jesus had to walk. Someone that was used to all knowledge, all power, he was everywhere at the same time to be stuck in this container and with his attendant limitations. Prior to this time, he could not be hungry. But when he entered this vessel, the Bible says, and afterward, he was an hunger. He was never created, so in, his, in, his, in the eternities, he can never die. But when he took on flesh, he could die. So, now that you understand where I'm going, do you know that when Jesus was going to die for you, do you think he knew he would rise from the dead? I'm asking you now. You know, I, I try to think about, are you sure? Are you sure that with those limitations? Okay. I know you will quote a scripture to me that, wasn't it Jesus told, that told them that on the third day I will rise? Have you not spoken some things by faith before? And when the situation, <laughs> situations, situations haunted you, you'll be, wait, now let's, 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 can we, can we think, can we? Pastor Joseph, have you not declared? And then when the storms, I'm just trying to put myself in issue. Because the fact that I knew that he was wearing humanity, I was just thinking, what risk did Jesus take? 
Because the one that will determine whether his sacrifice was accepted and he had the capacity to blot out the offense of the original sin from the ledger of justice, of judgment and equity was the father. So, the, and the father will judge according to righteous judgment, not because Jesus is, 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 his life is at stake, no. Are you following? Are you seeing the risk Jesus took? I can show you a few scriptures. Okay, give me uh, second Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, quickly. Let me show you a few scriptures because I, 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 I had to think. For as much as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, the word partakers there is koinonia. You know what koinonia means? It's fellowship. It means that the natural man, like you and me, huh? your flesh and blood are in fellowship. So if we touch your flesh, blood will come out. If we touch your blood, we must touch flesh. You get that? So there's koinonia between flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part. Now, can you see that the people that were writing, the word they wanted to translate is, is, is deep. So, can you see the repetition? He also, they, they could have written just he also. They could have written just he himself. They could have written he likewise. Are you following so I had to study that. What word was that? That's medical. You know, for, for human beings like you and me, is koinonia for as long as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. But for Jesus, he, he meticled flesh and blood. He put on, like the way, you know, this is not me. This my garment is not me. He just put on flesh. His reality was beyond the flesh. So if you want to touch Jesus, you need to go through the veil of his flesh. Are you there? You're not there. So he put on flesh. And the moment he put on that flesh, that is contained and limited him. He partook of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. That's number one scripture. Second scripture. Let me show you second scripture. Uh, give me that scripture that revealed uh, that Jesus, it's in Hebrews. It was with strong cries and tears that he prayed to him that is able to save him from death. Look for that scripture. What's, what's the scripture? Five what? Ah, you are not speaking. Five seven, Hebrews five seven. Okay, give me Hebrews five seven, let's see. Who in the days of his flesh, when he offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. It, 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 does this sound like someone that was? Huh? Which prayers, what kind of prayers? Did, he offered up prayers and supplications. How? With strong cries. Tears. Unto him that is able to save him from what? Death. And was heard because he, Jesus was afraid. Jesus was afraid. This were the scriptures. I, I put a lot of them together. He was heard because he feared strong cries. Strong cries. Unto him that is able to save him him from death and while he was crying with strong cries with tears he was afraid that was how jesus went to purchase our redemption he didn't know the outcome of this of the verdict of the one that can save his soul from death it was a risk it was a great risk he feared because the arithmetic here is that his blood in the Holy of Holies will need to be put on the balances of justice, of judgment, of equity. And then the rebellion, the original sin will be put on the other side of the scale. If the blood goes down, it means the blood is weightier than the rebellion. So redemption will be possible. He did not know the outcome of what the beam balance was going to produce. He feared. He feared. That was how he died. So at the communion table, what do we do? We show for his death. We remember him. That there's no man that walked this ground that was like Jesus. We renew our commitment to serve him. We, we know the risk you took to get us out of darkness. We have no choice but to serve you as our king of light. 
because of you today we can stand against the devil he cried with strong cries and with tears he cried he did not cry for himself he cried for you so he, in my own opinion he was not sure of the outcome of his work of obedience the bible says that he offered himself without spot by the holy ghost he had to he had to allow the holy spirit to lead him on how to offer himself so that he can be accepted everything he did according to prescription he wanted to be able to present a sacrifice that would count in the courts of heaven he feared he feared he feared that's how our redemption so 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 you oh my god when i remember these things i am bold to serve jesus forever i'm bold because of the risk that it took to bring me out of the dungeon tonight we remember jesus he prayed with strong cries and tears unto him that is able to save him from death and was heard the reason why he was heard was not because he prayed the reason why he was heard was because he feared If you are here tonight and you are not giving your life to Jesus Christ. He went to Golgotha because of you. And tonight if you are saying, Jesus, the rat race is over. I submit. Cleanse me. Anywhere you are, sitting or standing, put your right hand on your chest. If you are saying, Jesus, I want you. Your right hand on your chest and then your left hand up so that the preacher can see you. So you can come from your seat and come this way so that I can lead you to him. Then you'll be qualified to be a partaker of this table. Begin to speak to Jesus and ask him to have mercy on you. That your sins might be blotted out. Ask him to forgive. Ask him to write your name in the book of life. Glory to your name. So repeat after me now and say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner. Cannot help myself. Have mercy on me. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Every covenant I entered into, knowingly or unknowingly, let his power over my soul be broken. Give me the grace to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Is there any counselor that wants that will see them? That's Pastor Teso, Mike. Please wait, wait for them to see you. Just go with him for one minute. He will take your details and then you'll be back in the service. No order found, I know. Nothing but the of me. How precious it is. the flow. Makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Hallelujah. Please rise on your feet. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sought, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Those of you that are online, you can now administer the bread and the cup. Ushers, you will help us with a movement pattern that will make everyone. So when you come to the table, you take, you eat, and you move. Take, eat, move, and drop. So where are we starting from, ushers? Over to you, our choir people. At that rate, we will live here by 12 midnight, at that rate. Those participating online, you can do likewise. children there are not allowed. Don't come with children. Please. Don't give children. You can only give your children those that have arrived at the age of accountability that you are sure that they have given their lives to Christ. So all the children, teachers, filing up there. No. So go on. Those of you that have received already, I said, stay, dwell in prayers. Dwell in prayers. Be patient. Be patient. You establish authority. Jesus. Jesus, the righteous. Say by your blood. in prayers. Destroyed principalities. Jesus. Can you rise on your feet in a moment of time? Jesus. So the light of Roman has a leak of Bentan. So for us get of Ben, no copy a lava boche, a dear lava hunter. Yella mama suke, Cavasco, Rama Sacatalia, Brante, who says a leak of Resco Valamatali. Thank you, Father. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, 
kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos and please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people and most importantly we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section don't forget to subscribe